Well, joining us now for our Emmy Composers panel is Dave Porter from Better Call Saul and El Camino. Dave, thanks for joining us. Thanks so uh, much for having me. Thank you. Um, you've been part of the Breaking Bad universe since the very beginning. So what has it been like just being part of this universe for 12 years ongoing, spanning two shows and a movie? I think probably the question is more like, what would it be like not to be part of it for me at this point? It's been such a, you know, overarching part of my whole life and my whole career up to this point. Uh, I've been so obviously so blessed to have um, you know, the confidence of, uh, of Vince Gilligan and all those producers all these years. And, and it's really has, you know, it's the cliche, but it, it's so true for all of us, I think, you know, here who are lucky enough to work on these, these great shows is that it becomes family. And, uh, and this group for me has, has really been uh, with me for over a dozen years, which is hard to believe, but I, I see them and talk to them as much as my own family. And uh, they've been amazingly supportive. And even more than that, I think what's been so cool is how we push each other in a very positive way to always be better and always be pushing. They've made me a much better composer, uh, even though they're not composers, but working with the, all those editors and the same sound folks and the same producers all this time, you know, the last thing you want to be is the, uh, the weak link in the chain. <laughs> so you're always pushing yourself by not quite naturally to, uh, to explore. Uh, and, uh, and they've given, always given me that license uh, mm -hmm. to explore and that license to fall on my face too, which I've, I've done more than once uh, on the path towards getting it right. Uh, I, I think a lot of people will beg to differ, but <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. well, Better Call Saul is it's you know a very different show uh, from Breaking Bad, and uh, uh, you know you're, it's reflected in your score as well. But as we come towards the end of Better Call Saul and lead into Breaking Bad, do you find yourself trying to incorporate more cues from Breaking Bad into Better Call Saul's music? If not exact cues, certainly the the vibe the overall sense of, of, of scope and dread uh, that I think was such of the hallmark, particularly of, of, of the Breaking Bad part of the series. Um, and as, as we've gone along, it's been a gradual process, I think. When we started Better Call Saul, uh, was one of the harder creative things I've ever had to do because it was not that long after the end of Breaking Bad. It was all the same folks that I'm working with uh, but, of course, they're asking for something as radically different as we can manage, uh, which is hard to do, uh, especially when you're coming off something that, you know, seemed to be pretty successful for folks. And when we went about to try to reinvent For Better Call Saul, I honestly had questions about whether it was smart to be so divergent uh, from the original series, since, of course, they are related. Um, but now the genius of that has come through, and certainly not my genius, but the, the genius of the producers involved who really set all of us, and I'm not, you know, not just me, but the way it was shot, the way it's acted, the way it's written is all so different, particularly in those first few seasons of, of Saul, that mm -hmm. now, as we've worked to incorporate more and more of the Breaking Bad elements, characters, music, uh, and we get closer and closer to the to the the Breaking Bad timeline. Um, it's it's allowed us to travel that journey farther because we started from a, such a position that was so different. Hmm. Uh, well, you're submitting uh, Bagman, uh, which is one of the best episodes from last season, and it was directed by Vince Gilligan, and uh, it, it's very much in the vein of a classic Breaking Bad episode. Uh, and there's like two uh, pieces in there uh, which are it's similar, but like very different, but like the first one uh, during the shootout, mm -hmm. uh, it's it's from Jimmy's perspective, the shot from Jimmy's perspective. And I feel like the, the cues really mesh as well because it's a lot of like distortion and confusion. So how did you go about composing that? Uh, you're absolutely right. I mean, I think that there's so much um, action presented on screen there. Um, and, uh, and Vince Gilligan loves his big guns. So I, I knew there would be uh, only so much room 
uh, in that sonic universe there to, to tell a story musically. Uh, so I tried to carve out a few moments uh, where we were very specifically, um, as an audience, trained in on Jimmy uh, and, and, or Saul, I should say, at this point. And, uh, and so that we can really appreciate um, the sort of the, the level of traumatic experience this is for him, especially because it really comes into play in future episodes. Um, how much, not, not just the shootout that you're referencing, but this whole episode, the toll it takes uh, on the character of, of Saul uh, is has enormous repercussions for the story moving forward. Mm -hmm. And then the the final uh, sequence when they're baiting the the gunman, and then we have the car flip. Like that one is it's almost felt like a countdown to that moment because you're like, what are they going to do? Like, how are they going to trick him? So, uh, yeah. what were you what were you inspired by for that? You know that my instinct, which was wrong at first, <laughs> entirely wrong, was to make it a continuation of the big shootout scene you mentioned previously because in a lot of ways they're, they're related. Um, but the more I worked on it, the more I realized that again, this, this moment was, was pivotal. This moment superseded uh, any obvious on-screen action. Uh, and was what it really was, is a, is a culmination of all of the stumbles and the missteps and the disappointments and the beatings uh, that Jimmy Saul has taken over the course of the whole series, honestly, uh, and is a very defining moment for him. Uh, so I wanted to take it out of the element of, of an action piece, obviously still needing to include some of the dramatic what will happen as this situation unfolds. Uh, but again, trying to uh, elevate is a, is a sort of... Uh, maybe an overstated word, but, but trying to, 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 to lift it into, uh, make it, give it in, in a level of significance um, that it might not have otherwise. I hope mm -hmm. that was the goal anyhow. <laughs> It was. Well, I think you accomplished that. But um, switching to El Camino, uh, like that's a film, obviously. So did that change the way you approached it, even though it's like the same people, character you composed for, for, you know, five seasons. Uh, but, but it being a film, did that affect the way you, you scored it at all? It did in some ways and not in others. I think, you know, the way we uh, approached using music in, in the film was not... Uh, wildly different from how we do in, in the series. Uh, but there are aspects of making a film that just naturally lead to uh, a different way of working. Uh, and part of that, as, as uh, folks know who've worked in both, is that, in not always the case, but in the best case scenario, which I did have here on El Camino, you have a lot more time. And more budget too, but but more importantly, more time. And what that led for me was uh, a lot more time to uh, experiment, a lot more time to record live instrumentation, which we always all want to do all the time, but in a TV schedule can be very difficult to do. Uh, and most importantly for me, to be able to uh, spend that time going back and forth with Vince Gilligan. Mm -hmm. uh, to have him here in the studio with me, which was the first time he'd ever been here in, in uh, over a decade of working together, because it's just not feasible on a TV schedule. But to have him camp out here in the room with me and uh, go over ideas, try different versions and options of things, uh, and really, really get down to the nitty gritty of, of what really works for him and what tells the story, uh, that he wants to tell was uh, my favorite part for sure about working on the, on a film. Um, I mean, obviously, we, it's everything's up in the air right now. But heading into Saul's final season, do you is it too premature to ask like, if you have any ideas of what you want to accomplish? Is it just kind of just getting to the Breaking Bad era like you talked about before, or do you want to do something like completely new just to 
because it's his own separate entity. It's a, it's an own beast. It's a great question. I'm not sure I can answer it as fully as I might like because I, I don't know any more than you do about where they're going to go with it. I think a lot, an awful lot, will depend on uh, if and when they actually reach the Breaking Bad timeline over the course of the final episodes. Obviously, we're, we're building for that, and I imagine that's going to happen at some point. But where that happens in the final season is, is a great unknown to me uh, because there is, in theory, and I don't know any more than anybody else, but there is, in theory, a whole other story to tell about Saul as Gene in a post-Breaking Bad universe. Uh, which uh, personally I would, I would love to see happen, but I don't know that it will. Uh, and if that does happen, uh, that would be an interesting place to try something new for the universe because obviously it's uncharted territory. Mm. Uh, but I think most, more than anything else of, of the folks in the, in the Breaking Bad family that I've spoken with, uh, we're just uh, eager and nervous about sticking the landing. <laughs> you're you're going to have to start composing like Cinnabon themes. That's right. Season six. <laughs> uh, well, Dave, thank you for joining us. It's great speaking to you. And we'll see you back here in a little bit.